you've got to be honest with me because I know you're very young. I want to know, were you fans of Saved by the Bell? Had you heard of it when this project landed in your lap? I was definitely aware of the culture impact it had, but I was a baby born in 2001. I was watching Drake and Josh. Um, I hate to say it, I hate to oust myself like that. I'm a fetus and I did not watch the show, but I'm proud that I was aware of it. So at least give me credit for that. <laughs> 100% you get you get all the credit with your young fresh 2020 perspective. I mean, what did you think when you went back and watched some of those iconic episodes from the 90s? I think it's extremely important to recognize that although that show was so fun and so wonderful and served so many people this like warm comfort, it also was full of a lot of ignorances and a lot of things that showed how not evolved the times were. So what's amazing about our show is we take everything good from the original, but we have those topical conversations and we do evolve through our characters and through our storylines, which I think makes for a smarter, more enjoyable piece of television. I have a Kardashian coming at lunch. Who, Rob? Shut up. He's still in their family. Josie, I want to tell you, you know, just kind of on a personal note, reading your essay in Time Magazine, it, it really just touched me and moved me in so many ways. And I, I love that in your essay, you wrote that looking to the future, you're just really excited to be playing roles um, with, with people who you identify with. What did it mean to you to play a character like Lexi? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for saying that. That's really sweet of you. That was definitely a very vulnerable um, personal letter that I wrote. So I really appreciate you saying that. It meant everything to get to play this role. I mean, it was such a cool opportunity to get to portray a character like this that it wasn't all about her gender identity. I think that's what's so important about representation now and what we look to for the work that we need to do for representation in the future is getting to have uh, these types of characters, but not making it all about X, all about race, all, all about their gender, all about their sexual orientation. And the way we tell this story in a dynamic uh, layered way is just so fun to watch and play. And it makes my job easier. And it's just so fun for me. And I really, really enjoy being on the show. Ready for my party Saturday night? I got DJ Khaled's baby to make you a playlist. It's okay. Time out. I love that Lexi is the most popular girl in school. She's got the fiercest wardrobe in town. Talk to me about the role of Lexi and how it contrasts from how transgender actors have been you know, portrayed on screen in the past. Well, I think so much of trans representation as we've seen in the past as connotations of negative stories and is usually only telling uh, trans stories through their struggle. Mm -hmm. And when it's not through their struggle, it's through this bad lens that they're causing some sort of harm or harm is coming to them. So getting to tell a genuine, well-written storyline about a person who's a mean girl, who's a fashionista, who's a bad belief, but then also <laughs> happens to be transgender is the coolest thing in the world. Um, and I think Tracy Wakefield and our writers, and of course them giving me the opportunity to be a producer on the show, was able to, to make this story as authentic as possible. And I think people will be extremely, extremely pleased with it. You only know how Bayside works for kids like you. Hot kids, privileged kids, privileged kids. I know that you're a producer on the show. Are you in the writer's ears giving ideas and, and sharing insight about like what would actually make this character super relatable and authentic to me? For sure. I mean, I had so many conversations with Tracy back and forth up until receiving all the outlines and then literally doing surgery on some of the scenes that had to do with her identity because of how important it was to Tracy and how important it was to me to tell the most authentic story. What's great for this about me, but not necessarily for the writers, is that I actually worked with like eight of the writers on a show called Champions that I did before this. <laughs> and so I have all their numbers and I literally text them like, every single day or I did on set and was like, hey, what if we tried this? So I don't know, they might hate me by now, but they say they love me. They know my voice so well, so I don't have to do that much work, but it's so great that I have a seat at the table. Can you give me an example of a scene that you surgified? <laughs> I think it was really important to us to portray Lexi as like this mean girl who had all these friends, but then somehow find a way for her to develop this like beautiful friendship with Daisy. And it just seemed weird to us that she was would come to Daisy if she had all these friends. So it, I had come up with the idea in conversation with Tracy that 
she had been like this sort of celebrity that was afraid of having all these things leaked from her. And I think that kind of drives the storyline in episode three, where like throughout the episode, you see her kind of peeking in uh, to all these conversations and then realizing that she's so scared of being ousted for her crush. And that is why she develops a friendship with Daisy because she's the only one she can trust. And I think that creates a beautiful arc for the show.